um, illustrator, community member. So if everyone could give a nice welcome and wave, hey, Mr. Pinckney, they are all yours. Okay. Well, first, um, good morning. Um, and then secondly, um, happy St. Patrick's Day. So how how is everyone this morning? Um, and it, so today what I'm going to do is um, share with you a little bit of, um, uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Cohen said, background process, uh, studio tour, and we'll sort of mix it up. But I also want to focus on um, this morning on a lot on process, um, how Mr. Pinckney goes about making picture books. And I should add the beauty of what I do and the beauty of what artists do is that we all have our own approaches to how we go about bookmaking. So, but first I want a, a little bit of a history. I grew up in, um, in Germantown section of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I was one of, I was the middle child. Um, and um, uh, we grew up in this little tiny house on um, or East Earlham Street. Um, and I didn't know about the idea of becoming an artist, a professional artist. However, I loved to draw and I drew from a very, very early age. And I was encouraged to draw um, by my parents and then throughout elementary school uh, by my teachers. So I recognized very early that I had a gift of sorts, um, this ability and interest uh, and love to make images. So I practiced that and it, it, it served me well. So, um, but I want to also talk about um, the where I work, where I do my image making. So that's where the studio tour comes in. I thought I'd start this morning also with a process, just the beginning and the end stages of how, again, I go about uh, making the art for the books that I've illustrated. And then I'll also share with you the writing piece because um, uh, of late, I've been trying to and working towards a writing more, and that's uh, becoming a bigger component in, in, in how I express myself. So let's start with um, um, my first opportunity to meet a professional artist. Unlike you in the fifth grade, I didn't have an artist to come to visit my classroom. Um, whether it's virtual or what, I didn't have that. I had no idea what went into becoming a professional artist. However, as I said, I love to draw. And um, supported from the very, from the very beginning, my father would, my father was a wallpaper. Uh, he did house painting and wallpapering and whatnot. And my earliest drawings really were on the back of wallpaper that my father would bring back from leftover squares from his job of working, uh, you know, hanging wallpaper. And I would flip the pattern side over and do drawings. So in that way, I was always encouraged. Now, first grade, second grade, third grade, it became sort of understood that Jerry at that age was having some challenges uh, in school. That I, we were, I was beginning to find that I wasn't able to keep up with the other students in terms of reading. That was the most notable piece there, component. And um, when in fifth grade, it was very obvious that there was a, a, a challenge. Now, I'm, I learned as an adult that I'm dyslexic. However, I didn't know that uh, as a fifth grader, nor did my teachers. No one understood dyslexia at that point. Um, so there were no strategies um, in place. There were no uh, special instructions to help me uh, um, uh, along. So I began 
to be find ways to work around it, to navigate it, to skirt it, or I hit it. Um, however, the drawing, the ability to draw, uh, to create images and things that look like things, um, I was able to contribute to the classroom, but I think more than anything, I was able to demonstrate that I wanted to learn. I was just having difficulties in learning. Um, there was, I think, some special classes, but it tended to be for uh, students who probably like had like uh, challenges, but acted out um, as a way of masking uh, their disability. Uh, I was not that student. I was always, as I say, um, I was always a good student. I was challenged by classroom work, but I was always a good student, and I worked very hard um, to show that. Um, and I actually graduated from from uh, elementary school with with honors. So um, I have four things I want to leave you with, sort of a takeaway after this is all over that I want you to hold on to and use it for whatever you feel that it's appropriate and that um, that it works. And, and I think it doesn't really matter whether it's in the arts or whether it's sports or, or whether it's an instrument or whatever, but keep these things in mind because and in so many ways, this is, keeps me motivated and it also allows me to, to give you uh, a, again, a takeaway um, that's clear. One, I love what I do, and I think you'll see that demonstrated by how I talk about my work. And um, I work very hard, and I'll share that piece with you. You'll see um, um, that I'm a hard worker, and I explore as much as possible. Uh, three is that, um, and I, I want to spend some time on this because it's 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 also uh, something that we all we don't always find that that parallels um, work is that it's very very rewarding um, in terms of rewarding it the places I had opportunity to visit uh, in this country and out of this country uh, the people who I've met over the years and long and worked alongside and of course something that my parents didn't understand because as i said they supported me when i was very young uh, my father found it very difficult to keep that support uh, sustained when i made the choice to go to art school and then he uh, not knowing um couldn't understand that the, his son would choose to go in art school uh, <laughs> which he was concerned about how i was make, i was going to make a living so the fourth uh, takeaway is that you can make a living. You can make a living in the arts. So um, those are the four things I want you to hold on to. Now, most of the work and the work that you know that I've, I've done is, is children's books, books. Uh, and that's working in, in, in publishing. And, and perhaps 50% of my work is in publishing. And I love the idea of, of creating and, and, and bookmaking. I just love it. I love every aspect of it. And um, so I thought I would share with you uh, a process. I will take one book, uh, a book that is a fairly new book, was published in November uh, last year, and that is The Little Mermaid. Um, and then after that, we'll do sort of a studio tour where I will guide you through the, the, the sort of process steps uh, and, and the, where, I, where, where that work is, is, is created. Um, the story that I want to share with you that's attached to the studio tour is the story about when I met my first artist. And I, I was the age of 13. And, um, and by the way, we all, all the kids worked. We all worked at certain, when we could get to um, a certain point or age, and by the way, you had to be 13 
back in the day, uh, you had to be 13 in order to work outside, you know, the home. Um, so my first job was selling newspapers at a very busy intersection uh, in Germantown, um, in Germantown section of, of Philadelphia. And um, it was four corners, um, Germantown and Shelton, and each of the corners had a newsstand. And um, two were small, the other two were larger with, they sold papers along with, as well as magazines. And and, uh, and one of the stands even had snacks they, they sold. So those um, newsstands naturally attracted a lot of people and customers. And um, my stand, uh, just sold newspapers. And so um, we customers were off and on. Customers is usually uh, people waiting for uh, a bus or a trolley or 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 um, or, or leaving, you know, a, um, a bus or a trolley. So um, oftentimes there were sort of gaps in selling newspapers. Well, I loved memory, I loved drawing, and you couldn't find me with without a sketch pad. So I would take a sketch pad and some pencils to work with me. And um, when things were sort of slow, when there was no bus, no trolley, um, I would just take out my sketch pad and I would draw whatever was in front of me. Now that my drawings were sketches were a little bit balanced between uh, comic book characters and then whatever was in front of me. So I drew family. But on occasions of um, being at the newsstand, I would, you know, I would do drawings of people, you know, waiting for the bus, um, getting off of the bus uh, trolley. I would draw people as they were doing some window shopping. There was the Rouse department store right across from my um, my newsstand, and I would draw people, you know, window shopping, or you know, they would change the window displays, and I would do new drawings. So it was it what it was was this love of holding a some sort of a tool in my hand, making a mark, and then that mark becomes something. And um, I love that. I love that. So it turns out that one of my customers was a cartoonist. His name was John Henry. Uh, and he uh, created a comic strip, a syndicated comic strip that were in all the newspapers, or a good number of them. And the comic strip was Henry. This is a little character that got into mischief and all that kind of stuff. And um, well, this day he saw me drawing, took note of me drawing, and he asked if I would share the drawings with him, and I did. And he commented, but then he, after that, he said, "Well, I'm an artist too. I'm an. I think he says, or I remember it like, I'm an artist just like you, or something like that." But you can imagine the kind of excitement. Uh, coming from an adult who's an, a, a cartoonist who's saying that I'm an artist. You know, you're an artist just like I am. And would you like to visit my studio? My studio is right up the street from the newsstand. And um, would you care to visit? Well, I had not met an artist before. Not certainly not been in an artist's studio. And the kind of excitement uh, that generated. Um, so I arrived early um, one afternoon and to give myself time to visit with John Liney. And I did. And I went into this space where his workspace and um, um, tacked on the walls were projects in process. Um, and there were work tables. There was supplies. It was his tap array where he kept his drawing, his pencils, and um, the excitement of visiting that studio. So 
Um, and I remember that day so clearly uh, because, it, of course, it impressed me uh, so much. And there in that space, in that time, there was an artist that John Liney who got up in the morning and went to work and he was doing the very same thing that I'd love doing. He was drawing. That's how he made his living. And um, now, did I think that uh, that day, at that moment, that I would all of a sudden seek to become a professional artist? I don't think so. However, I do know this. It was that day that the seed of possibility was planted. It was John Liney who pointed sort of in the direction of possibility. So I wanna talk a lot about that because you guys are in school, uh, you're being taught um, and you're at this age where um, you might all not, not be thinking about what you wanna become. So see all of those pieces um, as a way to arriving at that day when you decide what you want to be. So use the school, use your imagination and develop curiosity. So what I'm going to do now is ask you what John Liney asked me, would you like to visit my studio? I'm, I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> I'm going to take that as yes. So um, what I have is my computer on a um, um, uh, a music stand, and I'm going to swivel it around, and I'm going to guide you through the studio. And then I'm going to come back, and we'll go through a little bit of a process, uh, how I go about making books. So um, I'm going to first start out with just swiveling this around. So you get a sense, sense, you see the space itself. And then here, I use books for inspiration as well as reference. This would be, this bookcase here would be more about, um, about inspiration. Um, these are artists that I've loved over the years and I've collected. Uh, catalogs and volumes on their work, as well as their, you know, their backstory. And you'll see I hang uh, oftentimes work um, on the walls. These are some portraits that I've done. This is very interesting because some of this is a portrait of the um, pastel, my great granddaughter. That was recently done. But this uh, pastel or Conte drawing was done when I taught at the University of Delaware in the 90s. So that goes back some time. Now, I'm going to point the camera to my workstation or my painting station. And um, so this is where I do the watercolor work. And um, these are my tools. Um, my my brushes, um, pencils, uh, markers. I love the, the drawing markers. And of course, this is my palette. Um, and this is where I mix my colors. Uh, interesting enough, there are times when I, when the illustration itself has a, maybe a, a, a blue cast to it, then I mix up all these different blues, or I should say I don't mix them up at this point, it says that they come in, in tubes. Um, this would be, it. so my, my work is tube watercolor that I just squeeze. And then of course, um, I add water to thin it out. Um, so this is where I do my painting. And, um, and you'll see again, um, um, I never know, I explore a lot with my work. So I never know what medium to use. So I keep a lot of different things at hand. You'll see also the fact that I not only love plants, but I love things. Uh, I consider these all really my friends. 
uh, you'll see um, this is a second work table. And this work table is where I do most of my drawing. So um, this is where I sit and do drawings. Now, from a sketch to a finished drawing, um, I transfer by a light box. In other words, I do a drawing on a trace, tracing paper or a vellum. And then I lay the sketch down on vellum. And then I lay watercolor paper on top of this. The drawing, the sketch underneath shows through the paper. Try it. Hold on, do a drawing, and then um, on a sheet of paper or whatnot, and then put another sheet of paper on top of it and hold it up to the window. And you'll see it comes through. And then I transfer that drawing. So that's this is the this is the table where I do the drawing. And um, and I'm talking about other friends. You'll see as I spin around, I collect things, signs. Uh, a lot of my biggest friends in the studio, that's, uh, and that it would be my record collection. I love music. Um, and um, this is a drawing that I did for the U.S. Postal Service, and it's commemorating um, the uh, Latin contributions to this country. And I'll move around very quickly so that we have time for questions. There's my exercising bike. And beyond that, you'll see uh, um, a, um, a bookcase. And that bookcase, it's all nature. Um, being dyslexic, I organize everything. So everything is, is, is somewhat in its proper place. And you can see there's a side room with more more uh, more books as well as another desk uh, that I do oftentimes um, do my writing. So um, this is um, a, a standing work table. I have different workstations. And this one here, um, I also, uh, in terms of reference, I keep it very organized in terms of there is uh, this grouping of books um, that I keep them out because I'm still using them. And um, this is a memoir that I'm creating and I'm writing. And the memoir um, takes place in 1940s and 50s with me growing up in Philadelphia. So these books deal with the 40s, the 50s, and also black culture. Um, these are all uh, research folders. Um, and again, I I'm very organized, and it's a, it's really an aid to um, to my my process. Uh, so I need to not be just always searching for things. And I'll just move quickly over here, and you'll see another project, which is uh, a project um, where I'm actually uh, working with Nikki Grimes, uh, the poet, and um, uh, it's, um, I'll share the sketchbook with you later, and Mr. Cohn will share some slides um, where this, this story began. Uh, this collaboration uh, started with um, my sketches and my encounters um, with, um, with nature that surround this area. This is, um, these are closets that I store my artwork, and um, you'll see flat files behind these, uh, these pastel drawings. These are what you might call independent work. And um, these are pastels where I explore things. These are portraits of my family um, during Corona. Um, we spent, I spent um, my, my daughter and my great granddaughter were here for about eight months. And I did these drawings of the people that um, certainly I cared about. Uh, and it was spending so much time. So these are pastels, not watercolor, the pastels. And um, so this is my wife, Gloria Jean.
This is my daughter, Troy. And I shared with you the portrait of my uh, great granddaughter, Zion. And, um, and this is a self portrait. And you can see that they're larger than life size. Um, and that was important to me to make them somewhat monumental. Okay, so we're going to return back to my um, my drawing board. And I'll share a little bit about process on a book that, uh, again, The Little Mermaid, that was published uh, the fall of last year. And um, I have been starting to write. Um, I've adapted many stories before, many projects, from, especially from Hans Christian Andersen. Um, but this one, um, uh, not only I adapted, but I used the Hans Christian Andersen story of The Little Mermaid more as inspiration uh, than, um, than, than some of the books that I've adapted in, in the past. And it was also a kind of an, a different way for me to work. Most oftentimes the text comes first and then I interpret the text. I illustrate the text, the prose. So um, this was different because I started out, well, I knew the story very well, The Little Mermaid, and I knew about the plot. I knew where I wanted to go, and I knew that I wanted to keep so many of the important elements. The fact that she gives up her voice to have legs um, to explore the, le of the world above the sea. And I knew I wanted to keep that, but I also knew that I wanted to change some things. I, I wanted to, um, uh, um, to, to take out some of the things that I felt might be um, a little bit um, outdated or less accessible. And so, um, so there's no longer a prince, but her search is, um, is to satisfy her curiosity uh, is for a friend, someone that she can relate to. Um, and I'll read a little bit of the text that allude to the fact that she feels herself as a somewhat of a, because of her curiosity and because she wants to see, to understand the bigger world is felt oftentimes alone. Uh, so her, her search is not only to, to understand the world above the sea, but also uh, a companion, a friendship. So. So I started again, I, wrote, I did a series of drawings and I, th I think we counted these and these are marker drawings. I did 80 of these and it was more to generate um, the, uh, a sort of a visual sequence that I could look at and then begin to write the text, knowing that a lot of these would not be used in the book at all but it was the, the, um, uh, was the beginnings of, 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 um, of forming um, a, a, um, a marriage of prose, of text and art. Uh, in order to do it, I had to, you know, to create these images. Um, it would be, like, I guess you guys in school, you call it sloppy copy. Is that still used? A sloppy copy, but this would be my sloppy copy, and um, also the fact that I, it's it's always present whenever I work on something that um, that it, it it's a love, it's a passion, it's it's how many possibilities, how many different ways can you see something, and again I use these things that I I, I share with you as how you approach your day, how many different ways. Can you explore something? And this is what you see here. This is an example of that, just that. So once I completed, um, and again, I, I mentioned the number 80, could be less or more, but I began to write the text. 
And I, 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 you know, but this was my guide uh, to writing a, the, the text for this project. So uh, once the text was in order and I worked with a publisher, an editor and an art director. So once we were satisfied with the text that I wrote responding to the sketches, uh, there is a, what you call a dummy book is prepared. And that's, it's, it's, it's a model for the book. And in this case for the little mermaid, um, and all of the dummy books that I create, it's simply a matter of deciding the size of the book, um, cutting out sheets of paste, paper, double that size, and then, uh, folding it in half. So it feels like a book. In other words, you can turn the pages except for it's blank. Now using those sketches as a guide, I develop them further along with the text. And I'll show you a page where we find title page. Here you can see where I'm setting out the layout of the page and, and a possibility for an illustration. Um, and I just simply tack into place uh, a typewritten sheet of the, um, of, the, of the text, the story. So I'm going to share with you um, something I'm really very proud of. Um, and, um, and that's a read a couple pages from my Little Mermaid inspired by the original story by Hans Christian Andersen. So that's the cover. First page. Far out in the ocean and miles below the surface, two realms sat divided by sea mountains. On one side of the ridge lived a powerful sea witch whose greedy heart cast a shadow over everything that tried to flourish. On the other side, the mermaid kingdom shimmered with light. There, there the sea king and his four daughters dwelled in an elaborate coral castle. The little princess, Melanie, possessed a beautiful voice, but she was not content to sing in the choir of mermaids like her sisters. She had no interest in sitting still on a royal throne. Instead, Melanie explored relics of the sunken ships and invented stories about objects she gathered from the wreckage. Once, she discovered a curious figurine that looked a bit like her, but for two cloth sticks where its tail should be. Melanie often wondered about the world beyond her home. Is it true? Ships glide atop the water instead of lying splintered beneath it. She asked her sisters, and that ball of fire burns over the land. So I want you to think about what I shared with you in terms of the process. In this case, the drawings came first. Then there was the type of the text, the story created using the drawings as a guide. You saw me share with you the dummy book um, where I'm beginning to work out the rhythms. I shared with you the workstations where the painting is done, where the transfer drawings are done. Uh, I shared with you the reference files and also reference books in my library. 
So the hope is that you get some sense that when Jerry Pinkney and I get up in the morning to go to work, what steps are, are in place um, while I'm working on a project? And I think that what we should probably do, oh, I we did, I shared, I, I'm getting confused between this, <laughs> this classroom and the last one. Did I share the drawing from my sketchbook of the eagle? No. I no, not yet. Not yet. So uh, in talking to Mr. Cohen this morning, he asked me about had I ever drawn an eagle because that's the, the, the uh, mascot for the school. And I said, wait a minute. Let me share. Oh, there's a story there. I, I got to tell you a story, quick story, because I want to get that. But this is my drawing of the eagle. And one day, yeah, Gloria and I were walking. Um, we were walking actually on the road, and we heard this. This was the sound and a burst of energy. And off flew, we could see an eagle took off in flight, right? So we walked and we couldn't figure out what was it doing on the ground. And uh, evidently there was a fresh kill. And we walked a little further and in the trees, they didn't move, were turkey vultures. And I remember that because, you know, they follow the eagles um, and whatever's left over the turkey bait. Um, the turkey uh, buzzards will will eat, and um, and these there were two of them. I remember that day. There were two of them, and they just well, they were pro they were on a low limb, um, and they were just staring. It was scary. Turkey buzzards. Okay, so that's that. That's that story. So. Can we open it up for some questions? Yeah, what I'll say is um, Mrs. Rosen and Ms. McConville's class, you've been terrific staying on mute. Um, there's nothing in the chat now, but if anybody has something you'd like to ask or you're wondering about, please put it in the chat and I'll read it out loud. In the meantime, I wanna show you a before and after. Um, oh, yes. You know, This is a working drawing and final art from Mr. Pinckney. And while he's talking about it, if you have anything, you can put a question in there. And meantime, I want to just share another uh, uh, project uh, that I did, um, but you probably uh, don't know about, and it's a it's a pop up book, and um, so I'll just share some of the pages. With you. This I, I I think I've done a lot of different projects over the uh, course of my my career, but I have to tell you this one is was pretty special, uh, only because. First, it was the first time, but I was also interested in the subject matter. Um, I think this is probably appropriate to talk about as well because it follows behind uh, the Little Mermaid. And um, these are all strange creatures, uh, real creatures uh, that live and thrive below the ocean and oftentimes on the ocean floor. And I was really captivated, those creatures that survive at the, really at the bottom of the ocean. So what I, I want you to, you know, to get out of all this is the, um, one is, is the possibilities in the different subjects that I get a chance to learn about and understand um, while I'm illustrating it. And also um, um, the possibilities of how many things that there are to be explored. And, and it's a learning, huge learning curve for me because I have to understand and learn about all the different subjects that I choose to illustrate. No, I'm gonna share some questions now. Uh, some are in the getting to know you about, you know, one asked about, uh, let's see, did you play sports? Um, I know you shared about the vocationals. If you want to maybe talk about what the gym team was and entailed yeah. that you were a part of. Yeah. I, I was not terrific in sports. I, I did love the idea of sports and, and competing, 
But, and so I, I, uh, I did join in high school, uh, Dobbins Technical High School, the gym team. And there we did things, um, you know, on the rings, um, uh, on the mats. Um, you've probably seen, um, certainly followed the Olympics. And so you see what the gymnasts uh, do there. Uh, we didn't do that quite that well, but we, we made the attempt. And um, I love that piece because I also like the idea of, of, of being physical that, that way. I love to walk and, and I used to run this area very well. Um, but anyway, that, so my sports was the, um, was the gym team in high school. All right, good. Age, I said you shared that on your getting to know you if they want to do a little right. math. Um, let's see. The Little Mermaid, yes, it is published and you can get it. I see it on Amazon here and other places. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to do something with our PTA president um, after we do grades two and three where you could purchase books and uh, I think even have them signed by Mr. Pinkney. So we're oh, working on something love like that. that. Love that. Um, yes, lives in New York. And then the next question is, do you ever get inspiration from music? I do, and and I shared with you my music uh, collection, and I I do, um, uh, and actually I've done album covers as well. So it was my introduction to classical music was first, um, uh, you know, uh, listening to um, music from Mahler, which I illustrated a number of colors uh, covers for a Mahler, and yes, and not only that, when I, <laughs> I at times when I do, you know projects that where I know music might have a place, like if I, when I did Black Cowboy Wild Horses, I played like Western music uh, and it gave a sort of sense of flavor uh, to the studio and to what I was doing. Uh, the next couple have a theme. How did you get so good at drawing? I've been trying to draw for years and it doesn't work. How long have you been doing art and how long does it take to draw pictures? Those are kind of connected. Oh, okay. All right. So I practiced. I started drawing it very early. And then um, I took some classes when I was in junior high school. I studied um, art in, 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 um, in high school. I studied the commercial art course. And then I went to the Philadelphia Museum College of Art for my undergraduate work and an art school. So, and the other piece to it is I con constantly, I'm constantly studying and trying to find ways to improve my work. So um, how do you get better? By practice, by doing it over and over again and learning. Great. Now, some of these questions have to do with your fame. Um, you know, have you ever been on a TV show um, and, or a talk show? Well, I have. I've done um, television and radio talk shows. Um, NPR, of course, the radio show, a station that sort of dominates this kind of w a world. But I've yes, I've been on NBC. Um, um, and, and but here's the thing: um, I <laughs> I don't call it fame. I, I call it like recognition for the work that I've done. That's key. It's recognition for the work that I've done and how well I've done that work. Um, that goes back to practice, practice, practice. Prepare, prepare, prepare. One question's about John Henry. People thought the legend of John Henry was true. Is a real person. Is that true? I worked with Julius Lester on that project. He wrote the text. I did the art. We both landed on different sides of the street. <clears throat> he believed that it was a folk tale or myth I I fell on the side that I got enough material uh, through reading old newspapers that he, he he was real. Now here's what I think. I think that he was could have created. There was probably a work uh, gang that used song as a way of, of creating a sense of rhythm in their work. Uh, there was probably a John Henry where that story came from, who was probably very strong. Whether he drilled through a mountain, uh, I I kind of doubt that. But isn't it so much fun to wonder about that? Yeah, and see where you come down. Do your research and see was there, wasn't there 
a real John Henry. All right, the last one, um, and I know there's more, but when the teachers do maybe their follow-ups, you know, they could include either their art or other questions that weren't answered. Um, let's see, would you ever make an art school or have you ever written a song? <laughs> I'm not written a song. I, I've taught uh, many years at um, Pratt Institute here in, in Brooklyn, New York. And I also taught at the University of Delaware. And um, um, so I have taught and so I've done, and I still go into classrooms and do some workshops. Yes. I'll actually ask one more because I know this is this ties into your wrap up. If you weren't an artist, what would you be? Because I know you describe yourself in many ways beyond the art. So if you want to maybe answer that about the other things you do, and then if there's anything else you want to say to wrap up. Well, I mean, I, I think that if I had, um, you know, I always had a desire uh, to become a musician, you know, and I played in the school band that was in junior high school. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, and I would love to actually go back to maybe pick up a guitar or something like that, because uh, music is uh, so much a part of, of, of my life. Um, what I what I what I want to leave you with lastly is that the the importance of who you become and what tools to get you there. And I want to share how important my school life was to me. Uh, how important my teachers were to me uh, as inspiration as and in, in support system. So um, they also uh, opened a, a world uh, to me that um, I'm now able to actually uh, partake in and enjoy. Um, I love to travel that came out of, I was sparked by some of the classroom um, work uh, that I did when I was your age. So, um, Lastly, I, I think is to be able to use this time in elementary school to begin to start to put into place those building blocks to what you want to, what you might want to become. Anything else you want to say, you know, revisiting the four points or anything else that you, uh, in closing? Well, um, the fact that the, the last thing is to remember two things. Um, Follow your dream. Um, find a goal. Keep that certain flexible because it will shift and it will change. But have something um, in mind to to a goal that that you have to achieve. Set something in place where you work towards. I think that's that's the big thing for me. It was, of course, becoming a professional artist and the best professional artist I could possibly be. Well, thank you very much. And on behalf of all of us here, can we all wave and say thank you, Mr. King Pigney? Have a great day, guys. It's been fun. I hope you had fun too as well.